Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA and Cisco Press author. And in this video, I want to show you how to set up a Cisco Unified IM and Presence server. Now, what does that do for us? Well, IM, that's an instant messaging service. We know what we do there. We type messages back and forth to each other using our instant messaging clients. But what is Presence? Well, presence gives us the availability of somebody to take a call, or it reflects their willingness to take a call. Let's say that I'm gonna be in a meeting for a while. I can just press the do not disturb soft key on my IP phone to say, don't bother me, I'm in a meeting. And that information, that present status, my willingness to take a call, that's gonna be reflected on, for example, a Cisco Jabber client, or if somebody has their phone set up with a busy lamp field button, a BLF button, they're gonna be able to look at that button and there's going to be a, an illuminated light next to my name so they know that don't bother Kevin he's busy right now he's in a call or if they're looking at their Jabber client there's going to be a little dot a colored dot next to my name to show that I'm not available right now this can even happen automatically it can happen automatically if I'm on a call it's going to show that I'm busy or if I just have a meeting scheduled in my Microsoft Outlook calendar the I'm in presence server can extract that information from the Microsoft Outlook calendar and say nope Kevin's in a meeting between two and three today so we're gonna show his status his presence as unavailable right now but in this video I just want to keep it really simple I just want to show you how to set up the I'm in presence server and get a Jabber client installed as well and the goal at the end of this video is I want to be able to place a video and audio call between one of the phones we set up in a prior video you might remember when we set up communications manager I set up a couple of Cisco 8845 IP phones. Well, at the end of this video, what I want to do is to place an audio and video call between one of those phones and the Jabber client that we set up in this video. But in order to make all this happen, we have to install an additional server. That additional server is a DNS server. You see, when I log into the Jabber client, I cannot just log in by saying I'm HQ phone three and here's the IP address of my server. I wish it were that easy, but now what we have to do is specify the domain main name of our I am in present server. At the end of this video, I'm going to be logging in with a username of hqphone3 at, and the name of the server is going to be hq hqimnp.cisco.local. We have to do that DNS resolution. So we've got a couple of servers to set up in this video. We're going to set up an I am in present server, and we're going to set up Windows 2012 R2 to act as our DNS server, and then we're going to get Jabber configured to register with the I am in present server. But to get started, let's just review the topology that we were working with last time, and we'll see what we're going to be adding in this video. Well, this is how we left off in our last video with our topology. We had installed a Cisco Unified Communications Manager at an IP address of 10.3.3.1. We had a couple of IP phones, HQ Phone 1, HQ Phone 2. What we want to do in this video is to add another server. We want to add an I am in present server, an instant messaging and present server with an IP address of 10.3.3.4. We'll add that to our HQ port group, which is associated with our HQ SW virtual switch, which then goes through our CSR 1000 V router named HQ to get out to the rest of the world. And we've got prior videos here on the YouTube channel that show you how all of that was set up. I think this is the fourth video in this series. And after we get our I am in present server set up, we still need to do some domain name services. We need a DNS server to resolve the domain name of the IMNP server to its IP address because our Jabber client that we're going to be installing, our Jabber client wants to point to a domain name, not an IP address. That's going to be a requirement for us. And like we were saying, there's different ways we could do this. We could set up a host file on our local machine to do that resolution locally. But since Cisco very clearly tells us that the CCA collaboration version 2.0 lab does have a Microsoft Windows 2012 R2 server, we're going to use that and we'll set up DNS on that server. But to begin with, let's go back out to our VMware server and currently on that server we have two virtual machines we've got the HQ router our CSR 1000 V that's one virtual machine and the other virtual machine is our communications manager server let's go add a third virtual machine and that's going to be our I am in present server and just to save time I've already uploaded the ISO installation file to the data store on our ESXi server. So let's hop out there now and create a virtual machine and then install the Cisco IAM and Presence server. 
Well, this is where we left off in our last video on our VMware ESXi server. We had two virtual machines, the HQ virtual machine, that was our CSR1000V virtual router, the HQ CUCM pub, that virtual machine, that was the communications manager server we installed in the prior video. Now let's install our third virtual machine. This is going to be our Cisco I'm in present server. Let's click on create and I'll say create new virtual machine and next I'm going to give it a name of HQ hyphen IM lowercase a and D P and the reason I didn't use the and sign there instead of spelling out the word and is that's not supported the compatibility just like I did with my communications manager server I'm going to say is ESXi 5.5 Linux is the guest operating system and the specific flavor of Linux we want to use is CentOS 4.5 or later, 64-bit. We'll use our one and only data store. And for the CPU, I'll say two. I want two cores. For the memory, I want to have eight gig of memory. For the hard drive, I want to have 160 gig hard drive. And I want my network adapter attached to my HQPG port group. And we saw that on the uh, topology just a few moments ago. Now, when I boot up, I want to boot up on this ISO image of the I'm in present software. So let's go under CD and let's say instead of host device, I want to boot off of a data store ISO file. And I've already uploaded it. And we talked in our last video about how to actually get one of these files from Cisco. And I'm going to install this file. By the way, you might say, why doesn't it say I am in P? Why does it say CUP as part of the file name? Well, that goes way back to what the product used to be called. It used to be the Cisco Unified Present Server. That was before it was the I am in Present Server. So CUP, yeah, that's just the old name for our new server. So I'll select that. And we'll say select. And we want to connect it power on. Everything is looking good there. Let's say next and finish. Give it a moment to create. And it says we have now successfully created our virtual machine. Fantastic. Let's click on it and start it up. Let's get it going. And we'll walk through the installation of Cisco's I am in present server. I'm going to go under actions and say I want to open this in a new tab. I'll make this a bit larger for us to see better. And through part of this, just like I did with the uh, Cisco Unified Communications Manager install, I'll be skipping through parts of the installation where we're just waiting on something to happen because this could literally take like an hour or more to install. Now, I don't want to test the media because I'm not really using physical media. So I'll say we want to skip that. I'll hit my tab key to go over to skip. Press enter. And I sped through some of that on the video so you didn't have to wait for it. And I've only got one product on this ISO file to install, and it's the Cisco Unified Communications Manager I am and Presence server. That's what I want. We'll say OK to that. By the way, I'm using my tab key to move around the screen to go down and select one of those buttons. Do I want to install this? Yes, I do. We'll say yes. And I want to proceed with the wizard. Yes, I want to do a basic installation. I'll set my time zone and OK. I'll let the host determine my speed and duplex. I don't want to change the maximum transmission unit. I do not want to use DHCP to get an IP address. I want to hard code the IP address. So I'll say no, I don't want to do that. And that IP address is going to be 10.3.3.4, just like I showed you on the topology. But right now it wants the host name. And that's going to be HQ hyphen IM and P. I am in presence. The IP address is 10.3.3.4, and that's going to be with a 24-bit subnet mask, so 255.255.255.0. The gateway address, that's our HQ router. That's our virtual router, the CSR1000V. It's got an IP address of 10.3.3.100. Do I want to enable DNS on this machine, a DNS client? I'll say, no, I don't need it on this machine. We will have to have DNS, by the way, set up for our Jabber client. The administrator ID, I'll say is simply administrator, and I'll give the password. And we'll say OK to that. The organization, I'll say it's Kevin Wallace Training, LLC. The unit is development. 
Location, Richmond, Kentucky, United States. And we're being told that just by definition, since we're installing an IAM and present server, we're not the first node in the cluster because this is going to have to interact with a communications manager server. So before this can successfully talk with that communications manager server, we need to go to that server and say, hey, I want to introduce you to this IAM and present server. So let me open up a new tab and let's go into our communications manager server and create an instance for this new server, this new IAM and present server. Let's create a new tab and we go to 10.3.3.1. That's our communications manager server. I'll click on a Cisco Unified Communications Manager and we'll go under system server. Let's see what we have now. We have just the one server. Let's add a new one. What's the server type? Well, the server type is CUCM I am in presence. We'll say next. I can give the IP address here and that's 10.3.3.4. For the IAM in presence domain, I'll say cisco.local. And we'll set up a DNS server later in this video, but let's save that. And we're ready to go back to our IAM in presence installation now and say, okay, we've identified this server on our communications manager server. It's now going to test our network connectivity. And I do want the installation to proceed after it checks. So I'll say no, which means yes, proceed after the validation of network connectivity. We need to give the name, which is hq-cucm-pub. Its IP address is 10.3.3.1. I'll give the password. And we'll say okay. I do not want to set up the mail protocol SMTP on this machine. So I'll say no to that and the platform configuration is complete. We'll say okay to that. And the installation process is gonna take a little bit, so I'll skip through some of this. Oh, it does tell me because I'm installing this on a VMware machine that I do have to reinitialize the virtual disk, which is no problem. I'll just say reinitialize all, and I'll be back when it's prompting us for more input. Well, great news, the rest of our installation completed. It didn't ask for any additional input. And here we are sitting at 10.3.3.4, the login screen for the I am in present server. But before we do any configuration here, we need to go back to our communications manager that we installed last time and do some pre-work. Remember when we set up the Cisco IP phones, the 8845s in our last video, we configured users for those phones. Well, we need to configure a user for our Jabber client as well. So let's do that. Let's go back to our communications manager server, very similar to what we did in the last video. I'll go under user management, end user, and let's just confirm that we've got our users from last time. We sure do, HQ phone one, HQ phone two. I'll add HQ phone three now, that'll be our Jabber client. We'll say add new, and I'll give our user a name of HQ phone three. I'll just enter Cisco as the password. For the pin, I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Not a good practice for the real world again, just so I can remember it here in the lab environment. I'll say that the last name is phone three and the first name is HQ or the middle name. In this case, I typed in the middle name. Let's save that. And once I save it, then I can scroll down toward the bottom of this configuration screen. And I can say, I wanna add some permissions for this user. I'll say add to access control group. Let's do a find. And the two groups that I typically do for all users are standard CCM end users and standard CTI enabled. That's what we did in the prior video. I'll say I want to add selected. Let's save it again. And once I save it, you'll see that this user now has been assigned to some specific roles. And now that we have the user created, let's add the phone, the Jabber client. To do that, I'll go under device, phone. And from the prior video, we can see that we still have our two 8845 phones. I wanna add a new phone though. And there's not gonna be an option that says Jabber that we're gonna select from under phone type. Now here's what we're gonna select. We're gonna select Cisco Unified Client Services Framework. So let's select that and I'll say next. And for the device name, now I don't think this naming convention is required any longer, but in prior versions of Communications Manager, when you were setting something up like this, you would start it off with CSF for Client Services Framework 
and then you would give the username, which in my case is HQ Phone 3. Again, I don't think you have to do that anymore, but I still do it out of habit because that's the way I've done it for years. And for the description, I'll say this is HQ Phone 3. The device pool that we created last time is HQ. The phone button template is the client services framework phone button template. Let's assign a calling search space so that we'll have permission to call those phones that we set up before. I'll put this in the HQ calling search space. And the owner user ID is HQ Phone 3, our newly created user. We need to set up a device security profile because this is going to be a SIP speaking phone. So we'll say Cisco Unified Client Services Framework Standard SIP Non-Secure Profile. We also need to set up a SIP profile. I'll just say Standard SIP Profile. Let's save this. We'll say OK. And now that I've created the phone, we can add a line to this phone. We'll say Add a New Directory Number. And the directory number for our Jabber client is going to be 2003. We'll put it in the internal partition, like we talked about in our prior video. All of my internal directory numbers I put there in the internal partition. And everybody that has a calling search space of HQ, not only will they be able to call out to the PSTN, they'll be able to call all the internal directory numbers. That's the way we set things up in our last video. I'll say that the description is HQ phone three. I'll just copy that. We'll say that's also the alerting name and that's the ASCII alerting name. And for the call forward settings, I like to say to forward everything using the configured calling search space that I specify here. For forward busy, internal and external, yeah, I'll say I want to forward those to voicemail, even though we haven't set up voicemail yet. That's going to be an upcoming video. Forward no answer internal, it will check that, which also checks forward unregistered internal and external. By the way, internal and external, that just means where the call come from. If it came from another internal phone, that's classified as an internal call. If it came from an external phone, that's classified as an external call. And then for all of these call forward instructions, I'm going to associate a calling search space of HQ. What constitutes a no answer condition? Well, I'll stick with what we did last time. We said it was 10 seconds. For the display caller ID, it'll just be HQ phone 3. Same thing for the ASCII display. The external phone number mask, same mask we used before, plus 1859222XXXX, where the Xs act as wildcards, allowing uh, the directory number to flow through this mask. So the external phone number mask is actually going to assign caller ID of plus 1859222003. How many calls can I have active before I'm considered busy? I'm a big fan of uh, doing just one call and then I'm busy, then forward it to voicemail. I'll set the busy trigger to one to enforce that. Let's do a save. Now let's scroll to the very bottom and we'll say we want to associate end users. We've got this new end user that we created, HQ Phone 3. Let's select that and I'll say add selected. Let's save this configuration. Let's go back to our phone. Let's save this just to make sure that it takes effect. We'll say save. And for good measure, I'll do a reset. Sometimes when we make a change, we have to do a reset in order for the change to really take effect. Or sometimes we just do an apply config. Sometimes just saving it does it, but I want to make sure it takes effect, so I'll do a reset. And now that we've added a user and we've added a phone, in order for this to work with the I'm in Presence server, we need to add Unified Communication or UC Services. Here's what I mean. We're going to go under User Management, then we'll go under User Settings and select UC Service. Do we have any right now? No, we don't. So let's add one. We're going to add a new service. And the service type that we need to set up is CTI. Computer Telephony Integration, and I'll say Next. And what we're pointing to here is our Communications Manager server. I give the name of the server, which is hq-cucm-pub, with an IP address of 10.3.3.1, and I'll save that. Now let's click Add New. We want to add a new UC service. This one, though, is going to be our I'm in Presence service. We'll select that and say Next. For the name, it's HQ-IMNP. 
The IP address you might remember is 10.3.3.4. So we're done there. What we've done now, we've created two UC services. One for CTI, Computer Telephony Integration, and one for IAM and Presence. What we can do now is take these two services and put them together inside of a service profile. And then we take the service profile and we assign that to the user that we created. So let's add a service profile under User Management, User Settings. We'll say Service Profile. I don't think we have any right now. Let's just confirm. Nope, we don't. So let's add a new one. And this new service profile, I'll just call it HQ IM and P. You can call it whatever you want. And I don't have voicemail set up right now, so I'll not worry about a voicemail profile or a mail store. I don't have conferencing set up or LDAP set up, but I do have an IM and Presence server. So I'm going to say my primary UC service for IM and Presence is the one that we just defined that points to our new server. For the CTI profile, that's going to be the one that points to our communications manager that we just defined. So we've now created this service profile that points to a couple of different things. It points to our communications manager for our CTI services, and it points to our IM and Presence server for my IM and Presence services. Let's save that. Now we can go back into our end user that we created a moment ago. We'll say user management end user. And let's go back into HQ phone three and let's associate this end user with this new UC service profile that we just created. What we do is scroll down just a little bit and it says enable user for unified communications manager. I am in presence. Yep. We want to check that. And what UC service profile do we want to use? Oh, the one we just created. Let's save that. And now let's associate our user with the device, our client services framework phone. I want to say device association. Let's do a find to see all of our devices. And I'm going to select CSF HQ phone three. We'll select that. I'll say save selected changes. Let's go back to our user. Let's go back down to add access control group. And since I'm using this with a Jabber client, there's another access control group that I associate with the user. It's standard CTI allow control of all devices. I'll say I want to add that. Let's do a save. And if we scroll down, we can see that I now belong to an additional role. So what we've done now, just to sum up, we've created a new user and a new phone, which is a client services framework phone. It's going to be our Jabber phone, our Jabber client. We then created a couple of UC services, one for communications manager, one for the I'm in present server. We grouped those two services together inside of a UC profile, and we just associated the profile with the user that we created, and we associated the user with the phone that we created. So everything's tied together now. The next thing we want to do is get that link set up between our communications manager server and the present server. That's going to be using a SIP trunk. Before we set up the SIP trunk though, we want to make some modifications to our SIP trunk profile that we have by default. I'll go under system, security, SIP trunk security profile, and you might remember I mentioned earlier that a SIP trunk has a very unique ability and that ability is to carry presence information across the trunk. Well, it doesn't do that by default. We have to allow that to happen. So I'm going to go in and say non-secure SIP trunk profile. And you see these check boxes, accept presence subscription. And there are a few other things here. And some of these might be needed when we're doing our Cisco Unity connection integration. Some of them might be needed when we're doing our I'm in presence integration. Here's what I do just as a general rule of thumb. I check four boxes, all the boxes that begin with the word accept. And that seems to get me covered with everything I normally do. So I'll say accept, 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 all four of those. We check those, let's do a save. That's going to allow presence information to flow across that trunk that we create, plus a lot more that we might need in an upcoming video for our Cisco Unity connection server. Let's do a reset to make sure this takes effect. And let's create our trunk that's going to logically tie together communications manager with our IAM and present server. Let's go under device and I'll say trunk. Do I have any right now? Let's do a find. Nope, no trunks now. Let's add a new one. And the type of this trunk is going to be a SIP trunk. And I don't need to specify any special trunk service type. So I'll just leave that at none. 
And let's say next. I'm going to give this trunk a name of presence. And I'll let that be its description as well. I'll put it in the HQ device pool, the destination address for this trunk. In other words, the IP address of the device at the other end of this trunk, that's going to be our IAM and present server. So let's go down to destination address and I'll put in 10.3.3.4. And remember the SIP trunk security profile that we updated? We now want to associate that with this trunk. And just like with a SIP speaking phone, I have to assign a SIP profile. Again, I'll just say standard SIP profile. Let's do a save. And to make sure everything takes effect, let's do a reset. So reset, close. And now we're ready to move over to our newly installed I'm in Presence server. So let's jump over to the I'm in Presence server. And I actually want to start off not here at the main administration interface. I want to go to the serviceability interface because I want to start up some services. Let's go over to Cisco Unified I'm in Presence serviceability. And we'll say go. And I'll get logged in. Let's go under Tools, Service Activation. We'll select our I'm in Present server and say Go again. And I want to select All Services. I'll say Save to that. And it warns us this could take a while. So what I will do here in the video is I'll pause the video until all the services have been activated. Great news, all the services are now activated. Let's go back to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager I'm in Presence Administration screen. We'll say Go. And I want my Cisco I'm in Presence server to know about the Communications Manager server. I need to let it know that, hey, you've got a Communications Manager server that's going to act as your gateway. To do that, I'm going to go under Presence, select Gateways, and add a new gateway. Now, the type of gateway I'm adding is a Communications Manager. I'll say that the description is CUCM, and the gateway itself is at an IP address of 10.3.3.1. Let's save that. And remember, we set up a trunk over on Communications Manager to carry presence information from Communications Manager over to the IAM and Present Server. Well, let's tell the IAM and Present Server about that trunk. We can go under Presence Settings. Let's go under Standard Configuration. And you see there's an option for the CUCM IAM and Presence Published Trunk. It knows about the Presence Trunk that we created because it's talking with the Communications Manager. I'll select that and do a save. Something else we want to do is to specify the Cisco SIP proxy listener. Here's what we do. We go into Presence, and we say Routing, and then we say Settings, and we say that our preferred proxy listener is Default Cisco SIP Proxy TCP Listener. That's what I always say, and then I do a Save. In order for that to take effect, I need to restart all proxy services, which I'll do. Next, I want to configure my TFTP servers, and I just have one TFTP server, just like a physical phone wants to boot up and download a configuration file from a Communications Manager server. We want the IAM and Presence server to be able to do the same thing. So I'm going to go under Application and say Client Settings, and my primary server, hey, great news, it already knows about it, so I don't even have to configure that. If I didn't, or if I had a secondary server, I might want to go configure it there. But all that is looking good. So we are pretty much done right now with our configuration of the Cisco I am in present server. Before we can make a Jabber client register though and start making phone calls, we need to set up some name resolution. You see, a Jabber client is not going to be able to just point to 10.3.3.4. I wish it could, but it needs to point to the domain name of this server. Now there are some different ways that you can do this. One common way that I used to do when I was doing practice would be to set up a hosts file locally that my operating system would go check and that would do the resolution. But Cisco tells us that on the CCA Collaboration version 2.0 lab, we've got a uh, Microsoft Windows 2012 R2 server. So I'm going to set that up and use that for DNS services. And that's going to lead us into the next part of our video. What we want to do is go download an evaluation copy of Microsoft Windows 2012 R2. And here's a shortcut link that you can use to get to this page. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash win 2012 R2 eval. 
Let me open up another tab and take you over there. Well, here we are at the Microsoft Evaluation Center, and I want to get an eval copy of Windows Server 2012 R2. I want an ISO file, so I'll say ISO, continue. It's going to ask for some of my personal information, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll select the 64-bit version, English for me, and I'll say download. And this is downloading. It looks like we've got about six or seven minutes left. So I'll pause the video and we'll resume once the download is completed. Well, the Microsoft Windows 2012 R2 server finished downloading, and just to save time, I went ahead and uploaded it to the data store on our VMware ESXi server. So let's go ahead and create a virtual machine for that Windows server. I'll say I want to create a virtual machine, and I'll say create new virtual machine, and I'll just call this HQ hyphen, I'll call it AD for Active Directory, because we might come back and use that in the future, in a future video. I'll leave the compatibility at ESXi 6.7. The guest OS family is, of course, Windows. And we'll say that the guest OS version is Microsoft Windows Server 2012 64-bit. We'll say Next. I'll select my one and only data store. And I'll choose two CPUs, two cores. For the memory, I really don't need that much for this. I'm just going to use two gig of memory. And for the hard drive, 40 gig should be fine. By the way, something I probably should have done when I installed the I'm in present server. I generally like to do thin provisioned so it doesn't take up as much hard drive space when I'm doing an install. So I'll say thin provisioned. It just allocates space as it needs it if we do thin provisioned. So I'll do that. But uh, other than that, I just need to point the CD drive to the ISO file that we downloaded. Notice the network adapter, it's already attached to the right port group, so we're good there. Let's say that for the host device, we want to go to an ISO file and it's going to be this install file that we just now downloaded from Microsoft's eval site. I'll select that and we'll say next and finish. It's building the virtual machine. Let's open it up and let's start it. I'll go under actions like we did before and I'll say open this up in a new tab. And now we have to walk through the installation of Microsoft Windows. And again, I'll speed through a lot of this content so that it doesn't take too long to watch it. But to get started here, I'll say yes, English, English, US, all that looks good. I'll say next, and I'll say I want to install now. Now, by the way, the resolution doesn't look great on here right now. After everything is up and going, VMware has some VMware tools that we can install, which is going to improve its compatibility with the uh, Windows Server. Now, it says we've got a few different versions we can select from here. I want a server with a GUI interface, so I'll select that. I don't care about the data center evaluation. I'll just select the standard evaluation with GUI and say next. And after carefully reading all that, I'll say yes, I accept the license terms. And for the type of installation, notice the upgrade says, this option is only available when a supported version of Windows is already installed. That's not my case, so I'll say custom. And here's my 40 gig hard drive. We'll say next. And it's gonna take a while to go through the install process. So what I'll do is I'll speed up the video pretty dramatically and I'll see you back when the install is finished. All right, the files have been copied over. We've got a username of administrator. I'll set the password to Cisco. Probably not a good idea for the real world. In fact, it's telling me it's not a good idea, so I need to give a more complex password. All right, I can do that. We'll say finish. And let's get logged in. I'll just say yes for this network question. And I'm asked to configure this local server. Now, I could set this up as an Active Directory server. It could do several other things. But I really want this just to be a DNS server. 
and I need to configure a static IP address in order to make that happen. I'm going to right click here and say Open Network and Sharing Center and I'll say Change Adapter Settings. Let's go into my adapter and I'll say Properties and for the IP version 4 address instead of obtaining IP address information automatically I'm going to statically set the IP address to what we talked about earlier that's 10.3.3.5 and it's a 24-bit subnet mask and my default gateway is 10.3.3.100 and for the DNS server I'll just use the Google DNS server of 8.8.8.8 .8 and we'll say OK close that now let's say that we want to make this a DNS server I'll say add roles and features Next, next, and next again. I'm going to select DNS server, and yes, I want to install all the features that are required for DNS server. We'll say continue, next, 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 and I'll say restart the server if that's necessary. And let's do an install. All right, looks like we've installed the DNS server feature. Excellent. Let's go down to our window menu again and I'll type in DNS and let's select our DNS manager. All right, let's expand our server and under forward lookup zones, I want to say I want to create a new zone and it'll walk me through this little wizard. For my primary zone, I'm going to say it's cisco.local. We'll say next, 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 and finish. Now that we've created a new zone, what we can do is add a new host, a new A record. So I'll say new host, and the name is going to be hq-im-and-p. And it's going to have an IP address of 10.3.3.4. We'll say we want to add that host. And that was successfully created. Fantastic. So now we've got an A record, which is going to allow our Jabber client to resolve the domain name of hq-imnp.cisco.local, it can resolve that to 10.3.3.4. I think our work is done now on our Microsoft Windows Server. Next, let's go out and get a Jabber client set up. Well, let's get logged in with Cisco Jabber. And by the way, on the Mac where I'm running this Jabber client, I configured my DNS server to be our newly installed DNS server of 10.3.3.5. So I'm going to log in with the user that we created earlier, hqphone3 at, and it's going to be hq-imandp.cisco.local. And we should be able to get that resolved into 10.3.3.4 using our new DNS server. Let's click on continue. And it's probably not going to find services on its own. It's going to come back and tell me to go into advanced settings. So I'll just skip the video ahead till we get to that point. All right, let's click on advanced settings. And my account type is Cisco IAM in presence. And I'll point to the IAM in presence server. It's 10.3.3.4. Let's do a save and it'll come back in just a moment and ask for a password. Let's enter our password of Cisco, click sign in. And by the way, since we are using a self-signed certificate on our Cisco I am in present server, it's gonna come back and probably give me a few different errors about the certificates. But here in the lab environment, I'm not using an official signed certificate, so that's fine. I'll just clear out any errors like that that pop up and we'll get logged in. Here's that first message that popped up. I'll just say continue. There's another one, continue again. Another one, continue again. Finally, we get logged in and we're ready to make a phone call. In fact, let's do this. Let's go over to one of those phones that we set up in our last video, one of the uh, Cisco 8845 IP phones, and let's set up a call with this Jabber client. Well, here we are on HQ phone one and we want to call our Jabber client. I'm gonna go off hook. And let's dial 2003, and I'll go answer that on our Jabber client. And we now have a two-way audio and video call set up. You can see me waving there. Well, to wrap this video up, let's go back to that topology that we started out with and just remind ourselves what we've configured in this video. 
Well, in this video, we started with this base topology. Then we configured the I'm in present server. We just added that to our VMware ESXi server, and it had an IP address of 10.3.3.4. But we said that our Jabber client would not be able to simply point to that IP address when a user is logging in. That username has to have the domain name of our present server. Remember, we logged in as hqphone3 at hq hq-imandp.cisco.local. So we needed a DNS server that we could configure, and we used Microsoft Windows 2012 R2. We downloaded an eval copy of that, got it set up, and we configured a new zone, and we added an A record, an alias record for our host, and we launched our Jabber client, and we were able to go over to one of our phones, our HQ phone one specifically, and we were able to set up a bi-directional audio and video call with our Jabber client. And if you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you did, please do me a favor, click like down below. It really helps my channel. And if you're not yet subscribed and you want to make sure that you get notified about all my upcoming content, just take a second and click on that subscribe button for me. I'd really appreciate it. On that note, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video where we've been concentrating on the Cisco I am in present server. I look forward to talking with you again in a future video where I'm going to show you how we can add on Cisco Unity Connection into this topology so we can add some unified messaging services. I'll see you back for that in our next video.